Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this lovely Thursday. My name is Mirabel Ochoa, and I'm going to quickly um, thank our sponsors, uh, which are Elite Corporate Medical, Sain, Plant Hill Nurseries, and CVS Caremark. With that, we'll get started with today's conversation. Rosemary. Great. Thanks so much, Maribel. And thank you, everyone who's joined today um, today on Veterans Day. Um, we are very lucky to have Lulu Tovar back. Um, back in July, we actually you know, had a really great discussion with her about lifestyle management. And we actually have her back today to talk a bit about diabetes and how we can prepare for the holidays. Um, if you want to go to the link, we actually have her um, past uh, interview with us recorded. So that'll be available on the United Ag website um, that, that Maribel has included in the chat here. So you can go back and hear a little bit more about her background. But briefly, uh, Lulu is a board certified holistic health practitioner who has a deep expertise in functional medicine. And what that means is that, you know, her expertise is not just like addressing kind of day-to-day -day issues or, you know, kind of health issues that come up, but really she looks at the root causes for why people have chronic physical and mental health issues and looks at really all parts of one's life um, to figure out how you can optimize your health. And so she has a really broad perspective um, that I think is very unique in healthcare. So I'm super excited to have this time with her today. Um, so her and I are gonna be chatting for about 15 minutes or so, and we'll have plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Um, so if anyone has questions while we're talking, go ahead and you can put your questions into chat. Um, or save them to the end and we'll get to them um, then. Um, so, well, first of all, thank you, Lulu, for joining. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, for the <laughs> introduction. And thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here talking about something that I'm really passionate about, uh, which is helping um, you bring healthy and happy back. That's my, that's my mission and my passion. So I'm really excited. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. I love that. Um, so first of all, since it is Diabetes Awareness Month, why don't we start there? Um, and so say, you know, when, when someone is first diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes, that's often a very confusing time, especially around nutrition, because there's a lot of bad information. Um, if you just Google it, Google, Dr. Google is not great in these times when you're first diagnosed. So if someone is first diagnosed, um, how do you think they should approach nutrition and their eating habits? Um, first off, 90% uh, of illnesses and diseases out there are lifestyle related. And so uh, diabetes is one of them. So that tells us that if uh, lifestyle was part of what created uh, the diagnosis, lifestyle can also help reverse it. Um, so the first thing to do is uh, if you want to start improving your blood sugar levels is to look at your lifestyle uh, because um, nothing is going to be corrected if the lifestyle and the environment stays the same. So the first thing to do is to uh, really start looking at what uh, lifestyle changes you can make. Uh, besides the food, which is the obvious, the processed food, the junk food, the uh, high sugar, um, sleep plays a big uh, role in blood sugar levels, uh, stress, and I'll touch a little bit more about it when we uh, reach the other uh, topics, but it's not just the foods that we're eating, but it's a whole lifestyle. Why? A diagnosis will tell you um, what, uh, it, it'll give you a name for your symptoms but it won't tell you what created those symptoms. So it's going back and looking at the lifestyle and that's one of the things that I really want to educate on today is what, uh, what are the key uh, parts that you need to look at when you start uh, wanting to improve your sugar levels. That's great. And um, Lulu, you and I talked about intermittent fasting. Um, and I think it's such a good topic because there's so many different ways. If you just Google intermittent fasting, there's so many different ways in which people do it. And, um, and there's really key reasons why uh, the timing of eating for diabetics is especially important for their metabolism. Can you go into a little bit more depth about how to do intermittent fasting effectively um, to help control blood sugars? 
Yes, uh, intermittent fasting is a big topic. Uh, there's a lot of information about it, uh, but there's a lot of misinformation out there also. So if you Google it, you're not going to get the uh, correct information for you. It's not a one size fits all. So not everybody, it's not for everybody. And also a lot of the things that I'm seeing that's trending out there is that uh, uh, some people are fasting way too long. Um, so uh, when we don't eat in the morning, um, there's a misconception that uh, that's going to keep our sugar levels low. But uh, if you're, um, especially for uh, females, it can actually hurt the hormones, especially the, the thyroid. It cannot actually lower the thyroid. If we're, if we're living, we are living in stressful times, but if you wake up and uh, you're rushing, you're late for, uh, for work, you're in traffic, uh, you're getting the kids ready, that's already a stressor on the body. So not having any food and um, not eating is another stressor. So what's going to happen is that the body needs, it's, it thinks it's in uh, fight or flight, it's in danger, it's in a stress mode. So when it thinks it's uh, in danger, it needs sugar. Sugar is the first, uh, that, that's the fast fuel for the body. So it's, if you're not uh, eating anything, it's still going to go and grab sugar from either the liver uh, or our muscles. Uh, cause that's where some of the sugar is stored. So that's the starch sugar. Uh, it's going to, uh, grab it from there. So if you do that every day, it's going to start grabbing it from your muscles. And that's when you see where people are having more of that, uh, loose, uh, muscle, not, not, not too much muscle tone because it's, it's still going to grab it. It's going to raise your sugar levels. So, um, it's not a good idea to do a long fast, especially uh, for anybody that's been diagnosed with diabetes or pre-diabetes. It's actually a stressor on the body and can actually throw the sugar levels um, off balance uh, more than, than it should. So a safe one would be a 12-hour uh, intermittent fasting. That's the safe one. So uh, it starts, you start counting the last meal that you had the night before. Uh, let's say your last meal was 7 p.m. So your next meal would be at 7 a.m. the next morning. That's a 12 hour. That way you're having a breakfast. Uh, you're still uh, benefiting from the intermittent fasting. It's still a 12 hour fast, but you're not stressing your body where you're not having breakfast. And especially for somebody that uh, has diabetes and pre -di or pre-diabetic, um, skipping breakfast is very detrimental uh, for the blood sugar levels. We want to make sure that we are having a healthy breakfast. So that is one way to benefit from intermittent fasting and also not hurting the sugar levels. I am, uh, I've created a free guide uh, with the video uh, on intermittent fasting that goes in depth with more detailed information because it's a very huge topic. Um, so that will be ready next week. Um, I have my information, contact information in the chat. So if you're interested in the intermittent fasting um, guide, reach out to me and I will send it, forward it to you uh, when it's ready uh, next week. But that's uh, intermittent fasting is, it's, it's one of the um, closest to the fountain of youth uh, that we have. It really can help us uh, slow down the aging process when it's done properly. But when it's not done properly, it can actually age us faster. So um, just like anything else, when it's done properly, it's, it, you know, when it's, when it's done too much or overboard, it could be detrimental. So um, I do recommend intermittent fasting, but I do recommend that you do it uh, under the guidance of somebody that uh, knows what is a proper way to do it for yourself, because it's not a one size fits all. The, um, the, t the length of time varies depending on the person's hormone levels, sugar levels, stress levels, and so many other factors. Um, so yeah. Great. Thanks, Lulu, for explaining all of that. And also, um, you know, if, if 12 hours is kind of like the, uh, you know, kind of a, a general construct, that's a lot more approachable than the 16 or 18 hours that's often um, talked about on the internet. And, and I think what you raise is really important is that to even 12 hours might not be the right amount for someone individually. And the way you work with someone is to look at all the things that are happening in their life um, to help adjust that time and find that op um, optimal level. So that, that is really interesting. And that's a concept that's re really not readily available out there. 
Um, and so that's a very new way of thinking about it and very individualized. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's really important to work with somebody if you're going to do a longer fast, um, especially the 16, 18 hours, because um, it does bring down, lower the, the thyroid and lowers progesterone if it's done too long. I do, in my practice, we do do a 24-hour fast or every quarter I, we do do a longer fast. But that is, uh, that is something that we do uh, once in a while every quarter. That's not detrimental. But we're talking about like something that's done on a daily basis that could be harmful if it's, if it's done too long for that, for that person's body. Gotcha. Now, what in your practice, what kind of myths or misconceptions have you seen people hold um, that potentially makes it harder for them to get healthier if they have a condition like diabetes? The first, the huge, biggest misconception that I've heard is that it, if it, it, it runs in my genes. So I'm going to have it no matter what, because it runs in my, in my family. Uh, that's a big misconception. It, our genes um, tell us what we are more susceptible to if we provide the environment to wake up that, that illness or that disease. Just because it's in the genes does not mean automatically you're going to get it as well. If your lifestyle does not allow for it to manifest, it won't happen. So our genes load the gun, but our lifestyle pull, pulls a trigger. So it's our lifestyle that decides if it's going to wake it up or not. Um, so that's one of the biggest misconceptions I hear a lot of people say, well, it's just uh, my mom had it or my dad has it, so I'm going to have it too. Um, what runs in the family is probably the lifestyle that woke it up. Uh, more than the genes. The, the genes, especially with the epige epigenetics that we, ha we have the research on that, saying that lifestyle can change whether your genes manifest certain illnesses or not. Or not. So that's one of the biggest misconceptions that I hear uh, uh, with uh, diabetes. Um, the second one is that food is the only factor. Um, so yes, food is very important. It's important to um, start making healthier choices, the processed food, the obvious, the, the sugars, uh, the sodas, um, it play a big factor, uh, especially um, if you're having a no sugar, uh, low, no calorie soda, at, there's a misconception that that's okay. Um, it's actually more detrimental than having sugar because they add in order for it to have no sugar, they have to add something else to make it taste good. And they add artificial sweeteners, which are detrimental to our health, to our mood, uh, to our sugar levels. Uh, but food is not the only factor. Stress plays a big role in your sugar levels. So if you're struggling or trying to figure out why are my sugar levels out of balance if I'm eating a healthy uh, diet, um, you uh, look, take a look at your stress, uh, your stress levels, uh, if you're living, uh, if you're managing your stress or not, because um, like I said earlier, if our body is stressed, it needs fast fuel uh, to handle the stress. And even if you're not eating um, anything that would bring your sugar levels up, it's going to go grab the fast fuel from the liver or from the muscles. Also sleep is, is uh, something that's really uh, a part of what can bring up your sugar levels. If you're not getting adequate adequate sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep a night, um, that can affect your sugar levels. Uh, our body uh, repairs while it's sleeping, so it needs seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. Uh, not getting that can also affect uh, your food choices the next day. Uh, and then it can also affect the hormones and insulin is a hormone. So not getting enough sleep uh, could be uh, could affect your sugar levels. Um, exercise, uh, not getting enough exercise, obviously that's an obvious one, but also exercising too much. When somebody exercises too much, that's also a stressor on the body. So that can also affect uh, the sugar levels. And uh, skipping meals, like we just mentioned, uh, not having breakfast or going too long with the intermittent fasting can be detrimental to our sugar levels. Um, not eating a complete meal. So if you're eating a healthy meal, a uh, salad, uh, but it's missing uh, the, complete, the complete macros. So we need to make sure that every meal has protein, it has uh, carbs, and it has good fats. So if you're eating a salad, uh, but it doesn't have protein, 
that's not a complete meal. So that could throw off your sugar levels. If it doesn't have good fats, that's not a complete meal. So uh, making sure that you're eating a complete meal. Now, another big misconception is the snacking. Um, it's, a, a, I've seen a lot where um, if you're trying to get healthy, the, the um, message out there is to snack every two to three hours. Uh, that's detrimental for the, uh, our blood sugar levels. So we want to try to aim at eating the three meals a day uh, without snacking in between. Because if we're snacking or we're eating every two to three hours, we're never letting those blood sugar levels come down. They're always staying at a high level because we're always uh, putting food in, in our body. So we need to give it time for the sugar levels to come down before we have our next meal. So um, uh, three to four hours uh, in between meals uh, is what's, uh, you know, if you want to start bringing down your sugar levels, the only exception to that is if you tend to go um, hypoglycemic, if your sugar levels tend to come down too much, then yes, uh, you do um, need to snack in between. But if your sugar levels are high, um, snacking in between uh, is not going to help bring them down. We need to give it that that um, that that time to to bring, to come down. Uh, so th that's one of the misconceptions. Another one is the the fruits and the carbs. Um, so a lot of people think because they are diabetic, they cannot eat fruit or they cannot eat carbs. Um, and actually there are studies that show that it's very important for somebody with diabetes to eat fruit that actually helps bring down the, the sugar levels. Uh, but it needs to be fruit, like the whole fruit, not a fruit juice, because it's different. When you juice a fruit, you're removing the fiber, you're, re you're removing the enzymes that help uh, balance the sugar uh, in the in the blood. Um, also, the carbs it, it's necessary for the body to also help regulate the sugar levels, but it needs to be the right kind of carbs. So it's not the processed carbs, it's not the bread, it's not the pastries, pastas. Uh, what we want is fruits and vegetables. Vegetables are carbs, and that will help with the sugar levels. Uh, the fruits want to limit it to two to three per day, not, not a whole lot of fruit either, but we do need fruit even if, if uh, you're suffering with blood sugar imbalances uh, because that helps. The carbs, the right kind of carbs help actually calm the body. Uh, so it really helps when it calms the body, it calms the stress levels in the body and it helps with the sugar levels. So uh, following a low carb diet, high fat, uh, it's not ideal if you're suffering with sugar, blood sugar imbalances uh, because the studies have actually shown that the high fat can actually affect the blood sugar levels. Um, you using uh, processed foods or using the wrong cooking oil, um, canola, vegetable oil, um, soybean oil, those are detrimental to our health in general, but they also affect the blood sugar levels. Uh, because what happens if you eat so saturated fat, if you have too much fat in your diet, um, it can actually clog the cells. So when the insulin comes, uh, it, its job is to re is to get the, the blood sugar, the sugar out of the blood. It can't stay there too, too long and it, it takes it to the cells. But if the cell is locked, if it, it can't put the key in the cell because it's clogged with the fat it's not gonna be able to open that cell so that it can put the sugar in there. So um, what's more detrimental to the sugar levels is are those fats, are those oils, those cooking oils, those um, canola oils, vegetable oils, and that's highly in uh, processed foods. Processed foods have those oils. So uh, that's something to pay attention to more than uh, whether you're eating uh, fruit or not. Fruit is necessary, that it has vitamins, it has nutrients that we need. Um, so don't be afraid of the fruit. Um, the inflammation plays a big part in what affects our sugar levels. So, um, and the processed foods and those oils increase inflammation. So that's where it, the problem is, it's with the processed foods because of the inflammation. Um, and so, yeah, those are some of the big, big misconceptions of, um, of, of how to eat when you've been uh, diagnosed with diabetes or when your sugar levels are off.
Wow, oh, that's that's wonderful. I mean, those were those are so many. Um, you know, that that's just highlighting the mass of bad information out there. Um, really quickly, what is your top tip, Lulu, for how we can still enjoy the holidays coming up while still staying healthy? Uh, you can still enjoy the holidays by making sure that you eat a balanced breakfast uh, with the three macros that I mentioned, protein, carbs, and the good fats. Um, making sure that you're hydrated because hydration, if you're dehydrated, that also affects the blood sugar levels. So um, if you're going to go to any celebration, any event, uh, make sure that you decide what's going to be your protein. Eat your protein first because that'll help balance the sugar levels and that'll reduce your appetite. Um, a one plate rule is what I like to uh, follow. And so you can go ahead and fill it up with whatever you want, but it's one plate. If you want a second serving, wait at least 30 minutes to decide whether you still want it or not. Um, and uh, if you really enjoy some kind of dessert, they have your favorite dessert there and you want it, don't deprive yourself. But I give myself the three bite rule. So you can have it, but have three bites of it. That way you still have that flavor, that enjoyment, but you don't feel deprived. Um, and then I always uh, ha uh, guide my clients into uh, um, if it's a hell yes or a no. So if, if that food is like, hell yes, I want that, then go ahead and have it. But if it's like, I'm not sure if I want it, then it's a no. Uh, don't even bother having it, if, especially if it's not a health food. It has to be a hell yes for you to have it. Mm -hmm. um, and then just uh, practice honoring yourself, especially during the holidays. Uh, we tend to feel guilty and we, we don't want to say no when somebody offers us uh, some food we think is disrespectful. But um, practice honoring yourself and, and practice saying no thank you uh, because you will be the one living with the consequences of whatever effect that food will have. They won't. So it's okay to say no thank you. Great. Those are so wonderful tips, Lulu. Thank you so much. Um, before we go into the questions, I'm going to give people a little bit of time. We have one question already, and I'll give people a little bit of time to start putting in other questions if they would like. Um, but before we go into the questions, um, so in the beginning of this session, Lou has already kindly put in um, a link to a free 15-minute session, as well as her email address for how you can get, get a hold of her. She's also included her Instagram link and also her website. And in addition to that, Lulu, can you explain the first two links there and what people can expect if they click on those? Uh, the first two links, uh, the first link is a green juice guide, uh, which is one of the things that really helped me when I started my health journey. And it's really beneficial for a lot of my clients who are struggling with blood sugar levels. So it's a guide that will uh, teach you and it has videos demonstrating on how to make green juice, how to prepare it uh, for the week. That way, uh, if you don't have time to make it every morning, you can set yourself up and prepare for the week. Uh, there's different recipes on there. What, what's the best blender? What's, uh, what's the best uh, time to eat it? Uh, when to have it? When not to have it? And so it's a, it's a guide that would really help you start incorporating more vegetables into your day. Great. Excellent. Okay. So we have one question here. Um, I'll read it out to you in case you can't see it in the Q&A. But the question is, I've had a sedentary lifestyle for some time. How do I start the change to a more healthy lifestyle? Um, so if, you're, if you haven't been exercising much, uh, I uh, recommend a graduated uh, exercise. Uh, do not start by doing, um, you know, a, a mile or two miles or overwhelming your body because that's a stressor on your body. So uh, the goal is to first start uh, working up to the uh, walking uh, 10, uh, 10,000 steps a day, uh, but don't start trying to do the 10,000 in one, uh, one day if you haven't. So start with like one or 2,000 and then gradually move yourself up to one or 2,000 until you get to the 10,000. Start there uh, before starting anything else. Um, so it, it's about starting where you're at, but not overwhelming yourself with trying to do too much at, at all at once. So start slowly. Always start with walking. Anybody that's not exercising, uh, don't start trying to run a mile or don't start trying to do heavy weights or anything like that. Start with getting in your steps first. That's great. We have another question in as well. Um, what is your take on occasional cheat meals or cheat days? Um, I, I believe that they are necessary so that we don't feel overwhelmed or deprived. However, uh, it's more of a cheat meal than a cheat day. 
Uh, so the difference between a cheat meal and a cheat day is that you allow yourself one meal, one, one uh, day out of the week that you enjoy, uh, not the whole day uh, full of uh, unhealthy me uh, meals. So um, it's okay uh, as long as uh, you're not suffering from something very uh, serious uh, or your sugar levels are not at a very dangerous level. Uh, because if they are, then I would recommend not having a cheat meal or a cheat day until you get that more in balance. Uh, and then you can start allowing yourself those cheat meals or che uh, not, not cheat days, but cheat meals. Great. Any other questions, folks? You can either type them into the Q&A or chat or raise your hand. All right, we've got another great question in here. Where can I find the links for the recipes? Uh, the link is in the chat where it says, the first link, I think it's in the chat. Uh, it's all the way up, folks. You have to scroll. <laughs> Great. And what kind of recipes do you have on there? This specific one is oh, only for green juice. Uh, green juice, it has different recipes uh, depending on um, there's some for uh, to improve the energy, there's some to improve the mood, uh, there's some uh, to support the liver, some that support for um, the, um, the gallbladder, there's different ones there. Uh, but um, it, I, I'm on my Instagram page, I, I tend to post some recipes on Fridays, I like to post different recipes on salads or other foods. Um, my stories. Sometimes I also post recipes, but um, if you're looking for some kind of a recipe more on uh, salads or a clean, um, clean meal, reach out to me and I can send you a guide, uh, a clean eating guide that has a few recipes on some meals so to get you started on incorporating more of the, the clean meals. And I like to do sim simple recipes. My recipes are uh, you know, five uh, ingredients, five to six ingredients, uh, so, so that it's not so overwhelming because my goal is to make it as simple as possible to not uh, make it so stressful and make it doable. Great, we have another question in. My brother intermittently fasts once a week for 16 hours. He has a hormone imbalance that shows with bodily tics. Do you think he should still do it? Is it beneficial? Um, that is a hard question to answer because I would need to know more in depth about what's going on with, with your brother. Uh, if it's once a week, 16 hours, I would, I would have him play it safe and do the 12 hours, uh, that I mentioned, uh, until he works with somebody that can do more of an in-depth intake to see what's going on, uh, what the underlying factors are. Uh, before he can do something that's stressing out the body, um, especially uh, if you indicated that he's having some hormone imbalances, uh, it may be a little bit too much of a stressor for him. Uh, so he can still benefit from intermittent fasting by doing the 12 hours, but it's key that he um, has a breakfast. Uh, uh, so 12 hours, 13 hours is still okay, uh, but I don't know, 16, I would need to know a little bit more information about him to know uh, whether it's okay or not. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you to the audience for such great, fantastic questions. Um, thank you, Lulu, for, you know, coming on and talking with us today and providing all these um, tips and extremely helpful information. I'm going to throw it back to Maribel just quickly in case she has any um, closing announcements. Yeah, don't forget to join us uh, next month where we will continue the conversation with Lulu um, and she'll be covering my favorite topic, gut health. Um, I'll go ahead and add the registration link here in the chat feature. Um, and I encourage you once again to attend the upcoming webinar as I think some of the tips from Lulu will be helpful during the holidays. So that's all I have on my end. Great, thank you, Maribel. Thank you, Lulu, so much. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Talk to you soon. Thank you.